morning. I'm Lauren Granada, and this is NBC5 In Depth. It's been one year since Vermont made history, passing the 2023 child care bill, making Vermont's child care system one of the most expansive in the nation. The bill invests $125 million into Vermont's child care system every year, meant to provide better access to affordable, quality child care for all Vermont families. Senator Keisha Rahm Hinsdale was one of the 17 senators who sponsored that bill as she gave birth to her baby just about one year year ago. She's one of a handful of working moms raising a toddler in the state house. And this Mother's Day, I sat down with Senator Rom Hinsdale to talk about the challenges and rewards of working full time while raising a baby. Senator Keisha Rom Hinsdale, thank you so much for joining us and happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks so much for having me and Mira. Mira, welcome baby Mira. Say yay. Hi. <laughs> Do you want something to play with? There we go. She's got her little mic box. Yes. So a year ago, <laughs> you became a mother. We're in the phase yeah. where we drop things and we see what happens and <laughs> pick them up. But yes, Mira is a year and a few weeks now. So um, it's amazing how fast time goes. How much has changed between this one year? Um, you know, I can almost Can't. not even remember who I was before being a mother and mostly in a good way um you know you don't miss a lot of things that you think you'll miss a lot um all you can think about is measuring success by if you're home for bedtime and you know how happy she is how much she's growing and changing what is it like juggling work and having baby mira you know i just think vermont is one of the greatest places to be able to do that i mean we often talk about how hard it is to raise a family here and it's meaningful that I can be the chair of economic development uh, in the Senate, you know, really setting economic policy and being a, a nursing pregnant mom. That's really never happened before in history. But at the same time, she has so many grandparents. She has so many aunts and uncles, you know, everybody wants her around and nobody minds when she's squirming and squiggling. And she's very vocal now. <laughs> So, you know, she interrupts a lot of hearings, but um, people are okay with a happy interruption like a baby. <laughs> oh, baby Mira. A lot of people talk about having it all. Yeah. Women having it all with having a family <laughs> and having a career. What is that like for you to, to juggle those two? You know, I just, I have uh, Governor Madeline Kunin as a mentor, our first and only female governor. And she talks about having it all, just not at the same time. And that the harder we are on ourselves about achieving balance and looking like we have it all together, um, you know, the more we're doing ourselves a disservice, no one's expecting that and people give you a lot of grace. So it's getting that tape out of your own head that you're not good enough or that you're doing all the things wrong. Um, we just have to model you know, the messy, chaotic, but beautiful thing that is being a mother, having a family, and also doing your job and getting your work done. How do you do it? Because I know <laughs> that it's been one year through the crazy sleep schedules and all of the work that you have to get done at the State House. How do you do it? Um, well, first of all, uh, I love my husband and he is an incredible dad. I just bought him a plaque that says best dad ever for his desk. <laughs> Um, you know, it does take a village. So whether it's a supportive partner, um, my own mother is moving out here uh, from the other side of the country in June. You know, we have another baby on the way, so two grandkids is quite the magnet as she retires. Um, you know, ha having all kinds of help and just allowing people to be involved, um, getting good advice and people recognizing when you're overloaded with information, but you know, really it's, it's the whole community being supportive and helpful. And again, we live in a state where I feel very little judgment. Um, you know, I've held really intense hearings, um, you know, where she's like smooshing a banana into herself and into me and, and people just go with it. So, you know, it's, uh, it's just weaving that into the workplace and into the important work that I do. And if anything, that gives me better perspective and more to offer, and I think people see that. And speaking of your work at the State House, what kinds of legislation do you want to see moving forward um, when it comes to working parents like yeah. yourself? Well, 
housing, as a lot of people know, has been my top priority because you can't really do what you want to do as a parent, as a, as a new Vermonter, even if you're moving here, um, without having stable housing that you can afford. Um, when I was young and my parents got divorced, uh, our home was foreclosed. My father moved from motel to motel. So, you know, I remember that he felt like he was failing as a parent. Mm -hmm. And as my mother tried to afford rent and raise three kids, that was a huge stressor for her. Um, I feel very privileged to have a stable home and, you know, uh, two incomes and be able to make things work. I want that for every family to have the resources they need and to not worry about affording rent and putting food on the table and paying their electric bill at the same time. So that has been my major, major focus this year. Of course, then we need to do more to make family friendly workplaces possible and uh, you know, make sure that businesses mostly want to support child care, paid family leave. They want people to have their full lives. In fact, what we saw in the pandemic is that over half of Americans had a work disruption or lost their job because of childcare issues. So we need to make it easier to find that balance. We can't do everything, um, but financially, it should be government's responsibility to help people uh, be able to work, raise a family, and do that stress-free. And you also have other colleagues at the State House who are beginning motherhood as well. Um, what is it like to also have that support system with them and also see other women kind of go through something similar? Yeah, I mean, you know, I have always looked up to role models in the legislature and beyond, people who tried to find that balance. There were fewer when I got there. You know, I got there in my early 20s, and now 15 years later, I finally have the family that I've always wanted. Um, I did make some sacrifices, but at the same time, I think waiting until you feel really stable and you have the people in your life that you can trust is really critical, no matter what you're doing. Um, and I should say, you know, I'm amazed at the barista at Starbucks who's also a mom. I'm amazed at, you know, a anybody making this all work. It's the legislature isn't the hardest place to find this balance. Um, but now in the Senate, you know, we have a mom of a one year old who used to be the mayor of Montpelier. Um, we are likely to have others join us in the Senate who have young kids. And so it's not so much as anyone feeling they need to pave the way but us all being there to advocate for family-friendly policies. Mm -hmm. Last year, when I was in the hospital giving birth to Mira at the end of session, you know, we had a pro tem, uh, Phil Baruth, who is a dad of two daughters. And we have people who have their own medical issues um, that are pretty devastating. And, you know, knowing that at the other end of the life spectrum, I'm starting a family. We were all able to participate remotely for the first time, um, you know, post pandemic that that rule has been allowed. That really helped us balance our lives and trying to serve at the same time. Uh, and so, you know, things like that, we can advocate for family friendly policies and just seeing more kids in the state house. Definitely. And speaking of more kids, I know you mentioned this briefly, <laughs> but you're expecting again. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. How do you feel about growing your family, especially with baby Mira and work continuing at the State House? You know, just when you think you have things under control, um, people will tell you that one plus one does not equal two, that this is a multiplying effect of now having, you know, two kids, two parents trying to still make it all work. Um, we're going to have uh, hopefully, if everything goes well, a baby boy in oh, September. Congratulations. Thank you. And, um, you know, we don't know what this will look like, but the adventure has been really wonderful. And I'm the youngest of three. I wanted okay. Mira to have that companionship in siblings. Um, and so we'll just, we'll be riding that wave. I'll be uh, deep into election season yeah. when when the due date comes. So, you know, it's always nice too to have these conversations with constituents who also give me a lot of grace. And, you know, they're talking about how, how can I be doing all of this while they're teachers and nurses and, you know, they're balancing a lot as well and they give me the strength to do this. I admire that a lot. And 
just your closing thoughts on this Mother's Day. Um, what's your advice to all parents out there, people who hope to become parents? Yeah, I mean, I try not to give advice to other parents because we're so overloaded with it. Um, and the best advice I got was to trust myself. Um, and that's really hard if you're a new parent and it's the first eight weeks, you know, or, or you're, you have a life in your hands for the first time and, you know, you don't know how to trust yourself. Um, but the more you listen to your own inner voice and take information in, take that expertise in, but then, you know, stand up for yourself, make your own decisions. Um, that's been a really big part of the journey because it is amazing. It, it might sound cliche, but you really do know best. Mm -hmm. And every child is unique. I'm hearing now that, you know, I'm gonna have another baby. I'll think I know what I'm doing and everything will change. Okay. So, you know, um, I've just valued when people are there, when you ask for help, um, when they're there with, you know, a homemade meal mm -hmm. or to help you do your laundry. Uh, and then, you know, you can ask questions that you have and they can do their best to share their advice in a, in a friendly way. But, you know, just trust yourself and listen to yourself and know when you're ready. Um, and make sure, you know, you have loving, supportive people around you if possible, because whether they're friends or family or a partner, that makes a huge difference so you don't feel alone. You know, there's so many books coming out now that say it's such a short experiment we've had in history with trying to be just two people raising mm -hmm. a child, let alone one person. Mm -hmm. um, for most of history, you had lots of other people who, who served as parents uh, alongside you to raise a village of kids. So, you know, just remember that it's not a weakness to ask for help. It's, it's a sign of strength and it's giving your child what they need. And I just want to wish all the mothers and nurturers out there a happy Mother's Day. Um, you know, you don't have to give birth to feel that deep sense of connection to children and what they need and how we take care of the next generation. So, you know, to everybody who's helping to raise great kids, happy Mother's Day. And on that note, thank you so much. Thank you for all you do for us, and I appreciate you joining us here today. Thank you, and Mira's probably crawling around yeah, your studio Mira. somewhere causing chaos. So. <laughs> Really adorable. Still ahead here on NBC5 In Depth, more moms raising kids in the state house. We get a different perspective from one Vermont representative when it comes to balancing work and family. Plus, this Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander Heritage Month, we're speaking with a Filipino American man who laid roots in Vermont almost 30 years ago. The changes he's seen among the growing Filipino population in the Green Mountain State and the continued importance of representation in one of the least diverse states in the country. Welcome back. Now to a Republican perspective on public service during motherhood. Ashley Bartley is in her first term representing the towns of Fairfax and Georgia in the Vermont State House. She and her husband are raising two kids, George and Reagan, and Bartley told NBC5's Jack Thurston that Reagan's birth was what motivated her to run for office because she learned firsthand how hard it was for young parents to find child care. Take a look. Giving birth to this new wife, I was like, I'm responsible for taking care of her, making sure she's fed and healthy and happy. And I can't do that if I don't have a place for her to learn and live and be happy during the day. Um, so that was really what had kind of inspired me. And there's such a community within this building. I've learned so much about the areas I'm passionate about, childcare and housing that it's not just the ideas of the lawmakers here, it's really everyone involved. You have the stakeholders, you have Ledge Council, um, you have all these nonprofits that we work with throughout Vermont that really make lawmakers their job easier and, and really support them as well. Well, you say there's a whole community at the State House, but yet there aren't many in that community who are moms of young kids. You're one of only a handful. Yeah. What's that like? 
it's hard. I feel like sometimes I'm choosing between, all right, well, I know my husband's home with the kiddos, um, but I'm here on the floor till eight o'clock. Um, I'm really lucky that I have a partner who will shoot me a text saying, hey, can you come off the floor real quick? We're doing bedtime. Um, and I, so I still get that time with my daughter, even though it's FaceTime. Um, but it's hard because there are the times in the middle of the day you get the call from daycare saying, she has a cough, she has a fever, I need you to go come pick her up. But you also know you have an important floor presentation or an important floor debate. And it's, what do you choose? Do you choose your child or do you choose the community that you've made an oath to serve? Um, but also, even though there's just a handful of us who have younger children, there are so many who have older children who are now adults. And it's nice to hear, you know, you're doing good. It, it, it gets better. <laughs> You know, the, the 3 a.m. wake ups, it's nice to come in and say, you know, it happens, give it a year. <laughs> um, so it, it, there's few of us, but we, it's nice to know that we can always kind of share stories. You mentioned childcare and housing as two areas of passion for you. Do you have new insights on the importance of those now that you are a mom of a young child? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Uh, I had run because Reagan didn't have childcare and I didn't know what really went into regulations for childcare, where childcare can go. Also knowing that our childcare providers don't get paid nearly enough, um, especially for what they do. They are, you know, really creating and molding the future of Vermont, of our nation, and I think that it, there just was a disconnect and it took new ideas. And I think last session we really handled it with historical child care legislation, which we're now the first in the nation when it comes to child care and what that offers uh, for our young families. Um, and then housing. I think housing touches every aspect of Vermont. I think we're seeing it right now with the school budgets being voted down i think the best way to kind of help pad that is to grow our grand list we need new vermonters we need young families um, and they don't have housing i there's a young individual in fairfax who came to me and he goes i just don't know what to do i want to stay here i've lived in fairfax all my life but there's no way i'm going to be able to find a house anywhere near affordable so I'm stuck living with my parents. I'm in my mid twenties and that's just not what I want to do. So obviously we want to keep him here. He's a hardworking Vermonter. He wants to stay here. So how do we make sure that our children also can live and prosper in Vermont as well? Are there issues that have come up since becoming a mom that have put you at odds with your own party? Yeah, absolutely there are. Um, a great example is actually the child care legislation that was passed last year. It's taken public funds. Um, there will be a new payroll tax uh, starting in July. And it was a really difficult decision to make as a party we're against taxation. But we understood that, you know, those most in need, kind of those bottom in, uh, income earners, but there's like this idea of, and we hear a lot with housing, the missing middle. It's those who do make a decent amount, but they're still really struggling because childcare is $350 a week. There was some hard decisions that were made last session for me, for sure. But you made them. Absolutely. What future issues do you hope to work on you are running for re-election in the fall. I am running for re-election. Child care is out of the way. What can we do now? Um, I think right now we're at a precipice with our housing crisis. Um, Vermont's very unique because there's, we have Act 250. Um, no other state has that kind of legislation, um, especially legislation that has been enacted over 50 years ago. So it's established in the state. Um, so housing is really important to me. Um, also, it, it, 
uh, it's something that was never even a thought for me a few years ago, um, but breastfeeding and how can we encourage um, individuals who choose to breastfeed, um, how we can make a safer connection for them and, how, and their child, um, but also if they choose not to or if they can't, what support systems can we put together? You feel that you are a better lawmaker being a mom? Absolutely. I think there are times it's easy to feel distracted or easy to be like, you know, I sit in the house so there's 150 of us and I'm, I'm one person. My voice doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I know that as a mom, I am trying to make the state a better place for my children so that hopefully in 20 years, they're still here and they're still living in the state that I've lived my entire life. What would it take to get more moms, specifically more moms in your approximate generation, to run for office? I think they need to know that they can do it. I think we talk a lot about representation. It's hard. I, I am the first person to say it's hard, but at the same time, it's fulfilling and some days are harder than others, but I think just being told you can do it and you're going to have the support, I think would really go a long way with young moms. Happy Mother's Day, Representative Bartley. Thank you so much. And Representative Bartley told Jack that while it was nerve-wracking at first to find a child care center for Reagan, she eventually was successful and is now even more grateful for what early childhood educators and care providers do for families like hers.